Graphing, slope intercept form, part two. Identify the equation of the line in slope intercept form. So when I look at this line, I need to find the equation of the line in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. I need to find my slope and I need to find my y-intercept. To start with, my y-intercept is the point where my line crosses the y-axis. So I go down my line until I hit the y-axis. In this case, my y-axis is, my y-intercept is negative two. So I now know that my equation is gonna be y equals something multiplied by x minus two. I now need to find m or my slope. So how do I find slope? Well, slope is rise over run when given a diagram. So I need two points that are right on the grid. So I go up my line until I find another point that's right on the grid. I now I'm gonna find my rise and my run between these two points. My rise is gonna be six, my run, or how far I go over between these two points, is four. Notice that to go from my left-hand point to my right-hand point, I'm going up, and both of these values are positive. So I now know that my slope is gonna be six over four. But don't forget that we need to reduce. So the actual slope is three over two. At this point, I'm now going to put this back into my equation and replace m with it. So my new equation is y equals three over two x minus two. Your turn. Please stop the tape now and try it and I will do it in a minute. All right, just like before, I want to know the equation line in slope intercept form. First, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So, first off, I'm going to find my y intercept, which is the point where my line crosses the y axis. So, I go along my point until I, I'm along my line till I hit the y axis. There is where it hits the y axis. What is that point? It is plus one. So I write out my equation. Y is equal to something multiplied by X plus one. I now need to find my slope. To find my slope, I need to find my rise and my run. So I'm gonna find two points that I know are right on the grid. You may find that there are different points that you use, but these are the two points that I used. It should give you the same slope. So between these two points, I need to find my rise and my run. So my rise is how far I go up between these two points. So if I start at the lower point, going to the upper point, I'm gonna go up two. Now I need to know my run. If I start at the lower point, going to the upper point, I go over six, but I'm going over six to the left, which is negative. So my run is negative six. I now put this into my equation and get a slope of two over negative six. Now again, remember, we always simplify to get a slope of negative one over three. Another common thing you should remember is that we generally shouldn't have a negative in the denominator. I'm now gonna take my slope and put it into my equation, replacing m, giving me y equals negative one over three x plus one is my final answer. Question two, which of the following equations represent a perpendicular line and a parallel line? Well, first of all, what do we know about perpendicular lines? They have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. What do we know about parallel lines? They have slopes that are the same. So. Let's start by finding the slopes of all of these equations. My first equation has a slope of two. Second has a slope of negative two. Third has a slope of one third. Fourth has a slope of three. My fifth one has the number in front of X is negative three. I'm just about to write the last one. And then I recognize that it's not in slope intercept form. 
So what am I going to have to do? Convert it to slope-intercept form. What is slope-intercept form? Y equals mx plus b, or we get y alone. That means I've got to get rid of the 2. So what is the 2 doing to y? It's multiplying. So to get rid of the 2, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, giving me an equation of y equals 1 half x, because the number in front of x is a 1, minus negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So in this case, the slope, or the number in front of x, is 1 half. Now, how many of these are parallel? Well, parallel slopes are the same. So I look at the, I look at the slope of 2. There are no others that have a slope of 2. I look at the slope of negative 2. None of the other slopes are negative 2. 1 third? No. 3? No. Negative 3? No. And 1 half? No. So what does this tell me? None of the slopes or equations are parallel. But how about perpendicular? Well, let's start with the first one. A slope of 2. Perpendicular to 2 would be opposite and reciprocal. So reciprocal would be 1 half. Opposite would be negative. So negative 1 half? No, I don't see that. I see a positive 1 half, but not a negative 1 half. So let's go to the next slope, negative 2. So reciprocal of negative 2 is negative 1 half. The opposite of negative 2 would be positive. So that would mean I need positive 1 half. And yes, I have positive 1 half at the very bottom. Therefore, those two equations are perpendicular to each other. Let's go to the next one, 1 third. What would be perpendicular to 1 third? Well, the reciprocal would be 3 over 1, and the opposite would be negative. So negative 3 over 1 or negative 3. And yes, we have two of those that are the same. I now go to the fourth equation, which has a slope of 3. The reciprocal and opposite of 3 would be negative 1 over 3, which is not one of the slopes that I've got. Therefore, I've done all that I can, and those are my two sets of perpendicular equations. 3. Finding the equation that is perpendicular to y equals 3x minus 1, going through the point 0, negative 5. Well, let's start with the fact that we are talking about perpendicular. So, what is perpendicular? Perpendicular is opposite and reciprocal. So, what is my original slope? Well, the number in front of x is 3. So, my original slope is 3. What would be a perpendicular slope? Well, perpendicular is opposite and reciprocal. So, that would mean that it would be 1 over 3 and negative. So I now can put this into my equation, and I now have to find b. Now, normally, this might be a problem, but I'm given a clue. Look at the point. Do you notice how the x value is 0? Anytime we're told the, co the coordinate has an x value of 0, that means the attached number has to be the y-intercept. So in this case, because x is 0, my y-intercept is pause is negative 5. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. That's my final answer. Let's go to B. B asks me to find the equation that is parallel to y equals 2x plus 4, but going through negative 1 and 5. So let's start with the fact that we're dealing with slope. We need to find m and x and b. So let's start with m. My original slope in the equation is the number in front of x, which is 2. I know that the parallel to that is going to be the same, or 2. Therefore, I look at my equation, and I can put in 2 for m. So I now have y equals 2x. But I need to find my y-intercept. And it's not going to be that easy this time, because my x value isn't 0. But here's what I know. I know that the point on the line actually goes through the, the line. Therefore, 
if I put it into the equation, I can find other values. So my original equation is y is equal to mx plus b. I'm now going to substitute in my slope. But remember, I have now have three unknowns. But I do realize that if I put negative 1 and 5 into my equation for x and y, I can now solve for the missing value. So I'm now going to solve for b. First thing I'm going to do is multiply 2 times negative 1. So that gives me 5 equals negative 2 plus b. I need to get b alone, so I've got to get rid of 2. 2 is being subtracted on the left, on the right-hand side. Therefore, I'm going to add 2 to both sides, give it, telling me that b is 7. So I now know that my slope is 2, my y-intercept is 7, and I can put that into my equation to complete it. Last question, word problem using slope-intercept form. Jimmy wants to sell his computer program for $8. However, his distribution company charges $250 to set up the web page. Write an equation for profit, P dollars, on the sale of W programs. First, what is profit? Well, profit is where you take the revenue or all the money you make and you subtract your expenses. So in this case, I'm going to treat profit or P like Y and W like X. Now, what do I know about my expenses? Well, he had to pay $250 to get it, his program set up. Now, if he sells one program, that's going to be 1 times 8. Two programs, 2 times 8. W programs, W times 8. Now, that is my equation. Notice it's in slope-intercept form, where my y-intercept is negative 250, and my slope is 8. Part B. If 320 people buy Jimmy's program, what is his profit? So in this case, I start with my equation, and I know that his that 320 programs were sold. That means I'm going to replace W with 320. I'm now going to figure out what the profit is. Bedmass says I do multiplying before I do adding, so I'm going to multiply 8 times 320, giving me 2,560 and I'm going to subtract 250, which gives me an answer or a profit of $2,310. But this is a word problem, so it requires a word answer. C. How many people bought his game if his profit was $542? Well, let's start with our equation. In this case, we're told the profit, that's P, so we're going to replace P with 542. I now want to get W alone or isolate the variable, so I'm going to get rid of negative 250. How do I do that? It's being subtracted, so I'm going to add 250 to both sides, giving me 792 equals 8W. I want to get W alone, so I'm going to get rid of 8. 8 is being multiplied, so I'm going to divide both sides by 8, giving me W is equal to 99, or 99 people bought his game for a profit of $542. Finally, D, is it possible for his, his profit to be $154? Well, let's start with our equation. We're saying the profit was $154, so I'm going to replace P with 154. Now, I'm going to work backwards to solve for W. First, Let's add 250 to both sides to get rid of minus 250, giving us 404 equals 8w. I'm now going to isolate for the variable by dividing both sides by 8 because 8 is being multiplied by w, giving me w, or the number of programs, was 50.5. So is it possible for his profit to be $154? No, you should be looking at this and saying it's not possible to have half a program. Therefore, it is not possible.